what I would like to do in the next couple of slides, I would like with you to look a bit more into what ICT could mean in the, FB, in the seventh framework program. As you have seen previously, the ICT component of the collaboration part is going to be the largest sub-program in there. We hope to, to be able to, to get the funding for up to 12 billion euro, which is for seven years, allowing a better coordination of European programs in the ICT area. And in doing so, let's look at this slide where we see that research in, the, in ICT, on the one hand, starts from basic research, innovation, to take up and best use of technologies. It is done by researchers, uh, private or public research organization. It's federated with national initiatives, and it's also federated into European initiatives. Now, there are a number of actors and players in this field, and it would be quite wise to put them together in a way that synergy can be created among those and overlap to a certain extent is avoided. I've put the, the four European activities which are going on into this map, and you see clearly that the European priorities in ICT are on the research side and in EU initiatives. There might be a bit less opportunities on the take-up and best-use side. However, with the new financial perspective, there will not be only a framework program for research, but also a program on innovation. And this innovation program will fill the gap, which you see to the right, of bringing research into daily practice, into take-up. What national governments, the role national governments can play is part of the ERA and ERA nets, which we have going on in FP6 today and will continue in FP7. Well, we hope those programs will again be opened up more and more, put together in strategic orientations to reap better benefits. And then we see on an industrial level the European technology platforms. There has been about two dozens of them being created as part of the, of the framework program 7. What are the objectives of FP7 in the area of information and communication technologies? Now, they don't differ so much from the overall objectives of the uh, framework program 7 proposal. However, one clear aspect here is that they should strengthen the science and technology base of Europe. It's a precondition for success. In doing so, they must relate to the current policy environment. There are a number of, of technology policies out there, and if you're not able to connect research in a meaningful way with policy developments, it will not give you the benefit you hope for. The research should reinforce our competitive situation. As I said before, most of these technologies, in particular ICT, we are competing at a global level. These developments need clearly to be geared towards a competition at a global level. And it should allow our European industry to become more competitive in producing the products here in Europe and for Europe. This slide shows you the spending of various economies on ICT research. Now that's in absolute figures. But you see that, like, the U.S. is spending about three times in absolute terms, in terms of money, what, is Europe, what Europe is spending on ICT technologies. So that that's, does certainly make a difference. It's not surprising that a lot of innovation is coming from U.S. universities and from the U.S. market. Japan, as well, is spending a lot on ICT research, clearly understanding the importance of co information communication technologies in our everyday life. However, uh, no one has an easy sailing, even if the U.S. spends a lot more money. The environment is constantly changing. There are shifts going on, like the increased global competition. China and India investing a lot in research and producing very clever products. There's delocalization going on. The offshoring and outsourcing affect anyone on this planet. There's an innovation model being undergoing a change. Open innovation is being discussed today, inside out, outside in. It's not clear that company research will lead to company products. Company research might lead to products somewhere else, whereas university research might lead to company products. There's a lot of flexibility and fluidity in the knowledge shifting around. There are new ICT research challenges like reliability, ease of use, the new markets and new applications which are coming up, which means there's still a lot of opportunity for European research. Now, as part of the, of the ICT research, the European Commission is proposing a number of areas to invest. On the left side, 
the red areas signify technology pillars. These are fundamental technology areas where new research is needed in order to integrate and arrive to applications and products. So in these integration pillars, a set of fundamental technologies will be integrated into new services and new products. You see personal environment. Probably all technology pillars will contribute to create better personal environments, to create better personal communication and tools around you. Equally, most of these technologies will contribute to a home environment, to multi new multimedia technologies, new work environments. All of them will contribute to an intelligent infrastructure, allowing better communication tools. And uh, a new innovative element here is robotic systems, where Europe has a substantial lead in various technologies in this area and would like to continue building now in an integrative way. And on the right side, you see a number of application areas. Many of them you will recognize as they are being supported today already by the framework program. However, again, they have been put together in clearly one area, the last one, trust and confidence, is receiving tremendous interest today. We expect from all applications, from these more and more ICT technologies, that they are secure, reliable and trustful environments. And as we have also today in our program, there's a fundamental research area, future and emerging technologies, which is uh, tackling more the kind of long-term research ambitions in these various fields. The work program, or a detailed work program for this area is under elaboration basically to the, in, during 2006. So the, pro the work will start in January and go on for the whole of the year to arrive to detailed work programs for all these areas. As I mentioned before, one, one quite interesting instrument put together by industries are the European technology platforms. Now those, those uh, are platforms, organizations, which are put together at the request of industry, by industry, and most of the, mostly partners consist of industry. Industry also understood that for a number of high-level ICT objectives, federating European interest does make a lot of sense. And I have here a number of these European technology platforms in, in my presentation, and I will show you one as an example. Again, European technology platforms federate European industry. What they tend to do is they try to, to seek the contact with the European Commission in order to see how to align the research agendas of the various organizations and see how they could fit or play a role in the European research fabric. Now clearly those ambitions are very large. Uh, if we have uh, technology platforms ranging from something like 30 to 200 members. So there is a tremendous interest from industry, a tremendous will to invest in these areas. And we see that these organizations can mobilize uh, financial resources certainly beyond their own capacities, but also involve public funding and funding instruments like the European Investment Bank. Now, I have put six uh, technology platforms in my presentation, all of them with the website and a, and a basic description. So I would appreciate if you're interested, you download the presentation and look up the various aspects which are of particular interest to you. However, just to show you one on uh, mobile and wireless communication technologies. Europe has a substantial lead in this technology area. The GSM uh, technology was a tremendous success for European industry. And this technology platform is going to build on today's success in order to, to guarantee future success in these areas. So it's going to reinforce this European leadership we have already. Now, when you look at the membership, you will see Alcatel, Deutsche Telekom, Ericsson, France Telecom, and so forth and so forth. In total, there have been 260 members registered so far. And you will see that most of them are actually fierce competitors in various markets. And however, all of them have recognized that to move this market, to move this technology further, there needs to be a kind of basic understanding on how this research and product should evolve over the next years. So it's very interesting to observe that companies, while being competitors in markets, still collaborate a lot on the research standardization side in order to bring products on the market at the service of, of citizens and their users. These similar observations have been made in all technology platforms, where usually strong competitors get together 
to clear basic issues on how to move this technology ahead. I'm not going through them one by one because uh, I think I will be running out of time otherwise. As I said before, I've put six of them here. Now, as I said in my introduction, the ICT is an underlying technology in many other areas of the European research. Now, I suggest as well, if you're interested, that you look certainly beyond the classical ICT themes and see where ICT technologies as well can contribute to tackle societal industrial problems. Like uh, in the program capacities, it's quite a large program, there's a strong part of it dedicated to support SMEs and obviously that in itself again has a strong pronounced SME component. Research infrastructure means today to a large degree research networks you will find here elements like Xion, again a strong pronounced ICT component. So I think it's up to you to discover this multitude of opportunities to see and, and, and find out what areas is best for your interests. Such a large program obviously needs to be managed and uh, we are managing here European taxpayers' money. So I guess you are aware that this management is quite significant and there is a lot of, of work involved to ensure that taxpayers' money is spent wisely and in a transparent way. However, the Commission embarked again on an activity to simplify the rules and procedures to go through and see what is probably not needed to streamline the activities to arrive to, to a higher efficiency and in particular to a greater speed in, in processing the, the Framework Program 7 mechanism. One element there could be as well the outsourcing of various activities. Already today the Commission relies in a number of areas on outsourcing like on the proposal uh, proposal evaluation system. Um, this is going probably to be extended in Framework Program 7 that like the entire European Research Council will be outsourced to a dedicated agency dealing with this. Again, we hope at the European Commission that this mechanism will lead to greater speed in dealing with the requests by the constituency and in a higher transparency. However, we will see what the Framework Program 7 will bring. Right now there are discussions going on on what exactly needs to be done in cutting the red tape. A similar difficult issue is the timetable. Uh, as I told earlier, the, the European Council is discussing right now the funding for this mechanism. It's supposed to start at the beginning of 2007. Preparation work is long and difficult. So the calendar I'm, I'm proposing here, or I'm suggesting here, is quite tight. We are at the stage of, uh, there's a commission proposal for the rules of participation, so the red line. However, the, the first reading in the parliament has been done, but uh, there are already a few delays, like the first proposals for Article 169 and 171 slipped already to next year. However, we are quite confident that the UK presidency will bring this discussion to a fruitful end and that by the end of the year we will have a financial perspective and a stability in terms of budgets and then everything can probably fall in place very quickly. However, the clock is running and all it needs sometimes is only one falling out and the whole schedule collapses. So, we'll see where we arrive. This slide, you might have heard in my presentation, may be a bit uh, of, of negative undertone. However, what I clearly would like to say at the, this, at the end of this part of the presentation, there are a number of tremendous European successes where researchers, individual people, got together to make it possible things we haven't been dreaming of, like mobile communications. GSM is a world standard and a huge commercial success. This is probably going to be repeated in an area of digital video broadcasting, where again, European research has made it possible that the standardization coming together of industry made it possible that the standardization created new products which we can then export on a worldwide basis. European Union research made it possible that we are champions in embedded systems. Otherwise, airplanes like the Airbus 380 and the like would not be possible. And this again is a tremendous success of the various small research and researchers around uh, Europe. In nanoelectronics, where probably Europe didn't play a role 20 years ago, we have four companies among the top ten. Again, I have a reflection point here before I continue. So we have been talking now about uh, Framework Program 7. We have been talking about, more specifically, about the ICT part in this Framework Program. 
And now I would like, as the last part of my presentation, to guide you through the overall policy element. This will just take a couple of minutes. I would like to make you aware that uh, despite the framework programs and all the other elements in the research arena, it needs a strong policy connotation. Without policy-driven research, we will not be able to turn out the innovation and the collaboration needed at Europe. So the Commission of Vivian Reading has embarked on a new policy objective which has been subsumed under the title of I-2010. It has three elements, which is a single European information space to promote an open and competitive internal market for information society research products and applications. It is the third priority is clearly on investing more in innovation and strengthening the European research. And the third element is to create or to put this European research at work to create a better inclusive European information society available to everyone. To promote clearly the growth of jobs in the production, research production, innovation and application areas. All of those uh, different activities have been elaborated in, in roadmaps and actions have been associated. So like in a single European information space in particular, the activities include the review of the electronic communications framework. Just imagine a few years ago, this framework, this electronic communications framework, this regulation is just a few years old. However, at the time it was conceived, voice over IP was not there. Now, simple questions like voice over IP, will it fall under this regulation or not? Again, policy and, uh, and policy making needs to be adapted to industry, needs to be adapted to societal development. And again, here we see an attempt to, to modernize all the legal framework needed for creating the opportunities. Innovation and investment in research, clearly putting the money which uh, the European taxpayer money at work to create the innovation we need. And uh, in particular, focusing on the European fabric of SMEs, as you might be aware, a large part, um, two-thirds of the people in Europe are employed in SMEs. SMEs are creating more than one-third of the gross domestic national product of Europe. So those are clearly places where innovation is happening, is important and needs to be nurtured. and to put all of that at the service of society. An information society that is inclusive provides high quality public services. Many of you, and in particular at this conference, I'm looking forward to, to presentations and demonstrations in this area. There are a lot of products and services right now being created, put at the, at the service of the citizen and customers. As one of the first slides showed, President Barroso embarked on, on a growth initiative. ICT is vital for growth. Again, here we come back that I-2010 is a major instrument to safeguard growth in Europe, growth and employment in a sustainable, sustainable way. The implementation mechanism clearly needs to be defined together with the member states and a number of, of actions include national programs, include member states to align the activities and objectives in, in a more focused and synergetic way. This I-2010 program is not in that sense an initiative, a pro it's an initiative of the European Commission, however it needs the kind of help and work of everyone. As you have seen, it includes the research community, it includes the member states, it includes the policy makers, it includes everyone. This will be the fundamental issue in how to put together this thing and how to make it work. It has a number of instruments and I'm stepping through quickly the last few slides and I wish you would have the time to download the presentation. Now what are the next steps? There are a number of activities going on with member state level. However, one point I would like to make is that beginning in spring next year there will be a review report on the activities of, uh, at the Spring Council of the I-2010 activities. In conclusion, it's, it's important to master information technology to, to, to focus on the Lisbon objective. It's central that we are able to turn out research into innovation. The ICT the research in ICT, we need to intensify 
and reinforce our strengths, extend the scope and size of the opportunities. We need to shape the needs citizens have and match them with the business and the research activities. If you have more information, and I'm not short of, 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 of any documents, I wish you would have time to look at those few documents which describe these uh, ambitions in more detail. And if you haven't had enough, I2010 certainly has an excellent website. I would appreciate if you also have a look at the Competitive and Innovation Program and the Structural Funds, which again have a pronounced ICT component.